Let's see what we got going on with this one. Does it work? Okay, I don't see or hear anything yet. Adjusting the contrast doesn't give me anything. I don't think it's working. We do have an issue here. The screw is not coming out. It's just making this clicking noise. Let's take a look. So I can actually tell by looking through this plastic that there is a little piece of plastic piping that the screw attaches to that has come unattached, has broken off. So let's grab a hold of this to hold it still and we should be able to get that screw out. There we go. going to push down on this little pin to release the battery contact. Get this power switch out of the way. Pushing up on these release mechanisms so that we can take this cable out, remove the motherboard, That's pretty gross. And here is the little piping that came off. We're gonna set this aside and try to glue it back on to reattach it when we're done cleaning. Hey, a little bug. I always like finding these friends. Just twisting this carefully side to side to release the glue. And I don't recommend putting this metal down in here, but I am using it because it's the only thing I could get down inside of here to grab it. Just wanted to get underneath this screen, carefully release it from that double-sided tape that holds the screen on there. Just pulling this off and there we go. I do want to reuse this tape if possible. We'll set it aside, clean it with some IPA in a little bit, and it should still retain enough of its stickiness to be useful. There we go. Okay, just press up on that to release it. Oh. We may have gotten a little more soap than we needed. Oh well, it'll just help clean. Hitting this with a little bit of air first. This is our 99% solution of isopropyl alcohol. Just giving this a good polish and clean, removing some of the flux and dirt. Cleaning particularly around these ports. This little crunchy plastic membrane on the speaker usually catches a lot of nastiness. If you have this exposed to any level of elements or anything gets through the speaker slots on the outside shell. I'm gonna use my BW100 here on this power switch just because it sounded a little crunchy when I was moving it. So there's probably some grime and stuff inside. Back and forth we go and should be better. Okay, I'm happy with how that turned out. Let's set it aside and work on cleaning the screen. I am using my Q-tip with my isopropyl alcohol here. The one thing I'm going to note is that I'm using very light pressure. Don't go too hard with this Q-tip. I don't want to scratch this screen. This is the screen that's underneath the screen protector that you actually have on the outside of the Game Boy. 
Again, very light pressure with my microfiber cloth. I just want this nice and clean. And I'm happy with that, looks good. Okay, I'll use my Q-tip and IPA and just kind of swipe up on the outside of this. Removing the gunk from it, but retaining the sticky quality once it dries. All right, let's flip it over. And get this side. Let's set that aside, let it dry, and we should be good to use it again. Now some of this is dirt that I'm just going to be able to clean off of here. Some of it undoubtedly is going to be staining or maybe even some of the yellowization that can happen with these plastics. But I'll do the best I can just cleaning it here. Yep, that's a lot of soap. Okay, we'll go rinse that off. Just gonna try to brush some of the outside part of this corrosion off and then I'm gonna try a technique today as I experiment with different ones. We're just gonna use a little bit of this citric acid and some warm water and create something that we can use as we work on this with a rag uh, to neutralize the base of the battery corrosion that has come off on here. There are some other methods that I have read about and even some of you in the comments have suggested some things that we might try in the future instead of using sandpaper, which I've done in previous videos. This is taking a little bit of time, but it is working and I definitely like doing it better than sanding. There, I got it. I think it looks pretty good. Let's just do the same thing on this RF shield. Oh yeah, that's coming off even quicker on here. Just wiping it with this rag, not even really needing to scrub it at all. I will use my dental pick here to get something that's really stuck on there. And there we go. Gonna wipe it off, dry it off. And I'm happy with how that is. Okay, so here on this shell, there are these holes that actually go all the way through on the top parts here where the screws are. On the bottom parts, it's solid. You can't poke anything through there. And this over here is where we have the pipe. So as I put the glue down there, I wanna be aware that that could run through there. So here's what I'm going to attach and set on. Trying to be very careful to just get a small amount of this around the edges. Okay, that's good for the bottom. If I can just get a little bit more up top. Oh, that's way more than I wanted. Uh, oh well, I'm just gonna try to put it on here and hope that we're good. It's definitely more than enough glue. I wish I hadn't gotten that much, but I feel like I'd make more of a mess if I tried to remove it and mess around with it. I'm not finding the exact right spot. Let's just use this with a little more precision. There, that looks like it's lined up about right. The glue didn't run through onto the bottom, so. Now here's what it looks like a couple hours later. It is dried on, it's in the right spot. We're just gonna complete this reassembly and hope that that works. This is not as sticky as I hoped it would remain, but I'm thinking with the pressure of the system altogether and what little bit of stickiness we do have remaining on this, it'll be good enough. 
Let's just make sure that our screen is lined up correctly. And there we go. Okay, that's what it's gonna look like. All right. Trying to use these anti-tweezers to get that cable inside of there. There we go. Now we can lock the gates back down. Make sure that we have the power switch in the right spot before we put it together. This is completely flat and I'm actually gonna use my pick here to bend it out a little bit because it has to have a little bit of separation in order to click and hold. Let me push it forward. There we go. Okay, we're getting to the part that I'm most nervous about here as we put these screws in and find out if that job we did on the upper right hand side here is good enough. We'll save that screw for last. And here we go. Oh, that doesn't feel good. Yep, I feel like I just broke it again. Like it wasn't right. And see, it's just clicking now as I turn it just like it was before. So we got it taken back apart here. And as you can see, it didn't actually break off. It's in there solid. That super glue is there. It's not moving. What I think happened is that I got too much glue down in there. And so the glue ran up inside and made it so that I have less room to fit the screw in. So I'm going to try to just drill this out down a little bit, get some of that super glue out of there so that my screw can fit all the way in. All right, I don't want to go too far because I don't want to pop through the other side. Let's try a screw. Nope, still not quite enough. Let's give it a little bit more. All right, once more, just putting this on here to try it. And yes, we can get the screw all the way tight now. I have a replacement screen cover. The other one was scratched too much and I just want to throw a new one on there because these aren't that expensive. Make sure to clean off any dust. Again, it may make you nervous seeing me work with metal on this screen here. I definitely don't recommend it, but it's what I choose to use because I can actually grab this paper and I'm being very careful. Still, fair warning. Now let's set this in and then we can remove that outer plastic protection. Oh, that's satisfying. And it looks great. Now let's test it out. So this is the part typically when I'm making a video where I have a decision to make. Do I just try to finish this not working, have it be about the clean, or do I try to fix it? So I shot everything as if I'm just going to clean it, say, hey, it didn't work out, doesn't always work. But of course I wanna know what's actually wrong with it. So what I do then is try to troubleshoot, try to figure it out. I know I'm just barely beginning to learn repair work, but I still couldn't see anything wrong that I could figure out. So I took it to Steve. Steve also took a good look, couldn't see anything wrong with it. So he asked me what game I was using to test it. As I used at the beginning of this video, I have this Game & Watch game that I was testing out. It's possible that it could be the game, but just to make sure, I have a test game here in the office, Donkey Kong Land. If you've watched either of my other Game Boy videos, I've used this to test it. I know this is a good working game. It's not hard to find. It's got this bright yellow cartridge. I looked around, I saw it on a shelf, I put it in, I tested it. This one also didn't work. But when Steve was looking at things, he pointed out to me that this game actually has a lot of corrosion inside. And that's when I noticed something. This is not my Donkey Kong Land tester game. This is. Steve took my tester Donkey Kong Land game and hid it from me for some other project he was working on. It's what happens when you work in an office building with somebody who's as big a deal as Steve is. 
He gets to take whatever he wants because he's Steve. I mean, I would never think of going into his space and taking anything of his. Except for the screwdriver I took off his desk and never told him about. Or maybe the controller that I was working on behind me. There was the parts that I took out of that Game Boy Color. And I mean, all of this stuff actually technically belongs to him. He's been giving me a job, even though the Restorist YouTube channel has literally only made tens of dollars in revenue. Still, it's just a matter of respect. It's just basic human decency. So now let's test this system with my actual tester game and see if it's actually not working. There's no indicator light, but there wasn't before. Contrast isn't, oh, there we go. Hey, I wasn't expecting this to work and it does. So just cleaning it this time, again, this doesn't happen every time, but sometimes just by giving stuff a good clean, you can actually not fix it, but you can get it to work again. This is working fine, all the buttons work. I swear I have died there, it's like a trap. They make you want to jump for that tree and then boom, there's a snake to hit you. Okay, taking a quick look again at what it was to what it is now. It looks a lot better, it's not perfect, but that's not what we're going for here. Thanks for watching.